The story I'm about to tell you is based on dozens of newspaper accounts in six Kansas newspapers, 1906 through 1909. I first heard about the story in 1983 when Dad drove me to interview his cousin Harold in California for a McNeese family history I was researching. When Harold mentioned hearing of a shooting in the family, Dad, Glenn McNeese, a normally quiet man, got up from his chair, walked over, and sat down at the card table where I was recording Harold's his story. He wanted me to get the story straight. Dad was born in 1915, but he'd grown up in Kansas and heard the story from an older brother. The way Harry told me, Glenn said to Harold, this John Lewis was the guy's name. He went out and told your dad or Hughes that one of our horses would lose, and they went out and there was a fight and Hughes got shot. Now that's the size of the story. Dad was a less said the better kind of guy with strength and honesty, not storytelling. But what he said about the horses cleared up a puzzling line in the story my brother had turned up, having found dozens of local news stories about the shooting online. The shooting took place Christmas Eve, 1906. What I'm about to tell you is my own brief version of the collective news stories. The setting was an apple pie social, which took place on Christmas Eve, 1906, at a small rural schoolhouse officially called the Apple Pie School for the apple trees that flourished in the area. It was about 20 miles southwest of Lawrence, Kansas, the same distance northeast of Centropolis and a few miles west of Baldwin. Houston McNeese, or Hughes as he was called, was 35, and his brother John were on their way to an evening social at Number 10 Schoolhouse in Douglas County, an event that would end in a free-for-all. On the way back to the school, they were attacked by John Lewis and Lee Anderson, two men with whom they had had some differences, and two of Lewis's buddies. At first, Lewis and Anderson pelted rocks at the McNeese brothers, striking them both in the head. Then the men fought, and the McNeese men were overpowered by the four men in the Lewis faction. During the melee, two shots were fired, one of which lodged in Hughes's abdomen. There was some confusion as to what followed, but a revolver was taken from John McNeese. The McNeese brothers were carried over to the Dyer home where medical assistance was brought to address their injuries. In the assault, they had been overpowered by the four men and beaten with stones. Wounds from the rocks and gunshot proved fatal, and Houston died before dawn Monday morning. John McNeese had been badly beaten about the head and neck, evidently also with stones, and was unable to leave his bed, though he would later recover. Immediately after the shooting, John Lewis, a neighbor of the McNeese's, was arrested, charged with assault with intent to kill, and lodged in the county jail to wait trial. A warrant was sworn for Lee Anderson, his companion in the fight, but efforts to find him were futile. He had skipped the county and was never found. The state had the task of proving that John Lewis had fired one of two shots heard and that his shot killed Houston McNeese. The prosecutor would contend that the fight was the result of a long-standing feud between the McNeese and Lewis families. The defense would contend that John McNeese accidentally shot Houston, his own brother, by mistake. Remember, as you picture this scene, that it was dark out. There were no electric lights. How did the feud start? Roughly a year earlier, the two families had been engaged in a lawsuit which the McNeese side had won. Later, it was alleged, a girl in western Kansas with whom Lewis had been co corresponding gave him over for a McNeese. In some manner, it was charged, Lewis gained possession of the letters she had written to McNeese and sent them all back to the girl. Then, a month or so before the apple pie socials, the McNeese boys and Lewis had all attended a box social. Lewis had tried to bend on a certain cake for his girl, but the McNeese boys had bit it up out of his reach and were said to have jeered about his not having enough money to purchase the cake. Nothing more had occurred to add fuel to the feud, but feeling in the community was now running high. It was an ugly piece of business, and the neighborhood had never been so stirred up. The state brought out testimony from many prominent men in the vicinity of Number 10 Schoolhouse to the effect that, quote, 
the character of the McNeese boys was good, that they were not quarrelsome, troublesome, and turbulent, unquote. Charged with murder in the third degree, John Lewis was convicted of manslaughter in the second degree. A majority of the jury was said to favor first degree murder, but gave in on the compromise rather than hang and have a new trial. Six lo local newspapers told the story not of a murder arising from sudden passion, but murder as the culmination of a long and bitter feud. After the trial, according to the Lawrence Weekly World, Lewis was sent to Lansing, the state penitentiary in Leavenworth, for a sentence of three to five years. Meanwhile, Mary McNeese, Houston's widow, was given a judgment for $1,500 against John Lewis, who was convicted of killing her husband. An attachment upon property belonging to Lewis was allowed, and the property was ordered sold to satisfy the judgment. Said the Jeffersonian Gazette, Quite a little romance was injected into the case by the marriage, after Lewis had been found guilty, of Lewis and Maud Howell, one of the principal witnesses for the state. Lewis and Miss Howell had been keeping company previous to the tragedy, and the marriage probably was the culmination of plans matured previous to that event. In March 1909, in a column titled, What They Are Doing, the Lawrence Daily Journal brought the whole story to a conclusion. Lewis, who was sent up for the murder of Houston McNeese in the Apple Pie School District scrap two years ago, has probably not been in the prison more than three or four nights since he was sent there. He is a trustee and has been in charge of the prison hog farm. He has a fine lot of hogs and has taken good care of them. He is a favorite with the prison authorities.